Good morning. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> I hope that everyone had a good week. And uh, today I want to share with you a little principle about how we can effectively talk to other people for Jesus. Now, I want to read a quote. It's on your... Oh, I'm going to ask um, the deacons if they could pass out this handout. Where is... Okay, so you're going to get a handout that looks like this. And gentlemen, because it looks like we have more people than I anticipated, maybe we could do one per, like, every two, if possible. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So... <clears throat> The quote is on the screen, but I thought it would be helpful to look at this, and you can take this home with you, but I want to read this. This is from the book Evangelism. It's from page 436, and here's what it says. To all who are working with Christ, I would say, wherever you can gain access to the people by the fireside, improve your opportunity. Take your Bible and open before them its great truths. Your success will not depend so much upon your knowledge and accomplishments as, now please notice this, as upon your ability to find your way to the what? To the heart, okay? So notice that when many people say, oh, you know, I wish I could be a soul winner, I wish I could witness for Jesus, but I don't know enough. Well, we're told that it's not so much what you know or what you've done in the past the key is your ability to reach the, the heart, right? Okay, and then let me read the rest of the statement for you. By, becoming, by being what? Social and coming how? Close to the people, you may turn the current of their thoughts more readily than by the most able discourses. The presentation of Christ in the family by the fireside. Wait, is that right? Yes. And in small gatherings in private houses is often more successful in winning souls to Jesus than are what? Sermons delivered in the open air to the moving throng or even in halls or churches. So this statement is important because it's saying to us that more important than preaching a sermon in a church more effective in helping people make a decision for Christ is speaking to them where? One-on-one, -on -one, right? Like, and you know, when it says the fireside, don't be confused. That simply means, you know, in the old days, you got into their living room. These days, we have electric heat, so we may not always use a fireplace. But the idea is that when you speak with people in their homes, when you draw close to them, when you make friends with them, and you, and you develop this relationship. Now, I had an experience that I want to share with you, and this experience underscores a principle that I feel many people are unaware of, but is really the simplest method of reaching the heart, okay? So it actually happened two days ago. So two days ago, I was attending my son's graduation in another state. So we were in Hawaii, and during the day, we were actually just spending some time on the beach. And you know, beaches are crowded, and so we found a little spot in the shade, we put our towels down, and we went into the water. But when we came back, we decided we would go somewhere else, and so we asked the people sitting close to us, I just said, do you mind? Could you, could you just watch our things? We're gonna go, and we'll, but we'll be right back. And they said, sure, no problem. So we went to another part of the beach, we came back, and we sat down, and we were drying off, and then the ladies that we had talked with, two of them, they said, where are you guys from? Now, <clears throat> I don't know if you realize this, but this is a very, very innocent question, right? Where are you from? Uh, because there's so many tourists that come to Hawaii. And so we thought, yeah, that's fine. So I just said, hey, we're from California. And then they said, what well, part of California? And then we said, we're from Loma Linda, California. And then the woman said, oh, my daughter went to school there. And, and, and so right away in my mind, I thought, could these people be Adventist? <laughs> but anyway, she said, yeah, she attended the School of Dietetics. And so I thought, wow. And then I said, where are you guys from? 
And that's fair, right? That's not hard to ask, right? Because, you know, she asked me, so it's kind of like the law of reciprocity. If, if I do something for you, you do something for me, right? So she said, oh, we're from Colorado. But then she got back to this Loma Linda thing. She said, yeah, you know, she said, my son, uh, my, sorry, my daughter went to the school there, and it was a really good program. She said, unlike other schools where you have to get an internship after you go through school, in Loma Linda, because they have a network of schools, I'm sorry, a network of hospitals, they automatically enroll you into an internship. And she said, my daughter had a really good time there. And she said, when I was looking for a school, I liked it right away because it was very conservative. Now, I don't know if you can see, but on this chart, we started talking about very general things. Where are you from, right? But then very quickly, we, trans into, we transitioned into something very specific. We were talking about the school at Loma Linda, right? Does that make sense? So we went from general to specific. But I want you to notice that the conversation at that point wasn't enough to generate or, or to begin talking about really personal things. So here's what happened. And see, this should have been a story of how I was the one that was leading the conversation, but it wasn't me. It was this woman. She was doing this chart to me, okay? So then the woman said, then she asked me, and she said, are you all Adventists? And we said, yes. And then my wife somehow brought up this point that in Loma Linda, people live longer there than in any other part of the United States. And she mentioned that this is one of the blue zones, right? Even though it's not in a rural area, this is one of the blue zones there in, in the U.S. So then we started talking about Adventists. We started talking about the Adventist lifestyle, how Adventists don't just, you know, have a health thing, but even the, the, the ones that don't practice the health message, because of their spiritual commitment, even then, they still live longer than the average American because there's a spiritual component. So then the conversation shifted. And again, it wasn't me. It was these ladies. They kept asking. They said, you know, so we started talking, for some reason, we started talking about how the weather and nature seemed to be really unpredictable. And they were talking about how in Colorado, the weather is so unpredictable, and, and it's for the last 12 years, it's been so strange that all these Californians are moving up to that Denver area. But then one of them said, you know, I think this is a sign of the last days. Now, you have to remember, we're on a beach, okay, and we just came out of the water, we're tripping wet, and, you know, these ladies are talking to us, and they're the ones that are pushing this conversation. And when she said it's a sign of the last days, I knew, like, this is my key. This is, this is like, if I don't say anything, then something's wrong with me, okay? <laughs> so when she said that, I said, I'm sure you know, but Adventists are very aware of the issues concerning the last days. So then we started talking about spiritual things very openly. And she shared about her children's spiritual commitment, and they were talking about the Bible. And then one of the ladies, there was two of them, one of the ladies said, you know, all I want in life, all that I want is I want my children to be in the church serving God. That's all I want. Now, I don't know if you can understand where we are, but in this chart, see, anytime someone talks about a universal truth, you enter the realm of philosophical interest, okay? When she started talking about, you know, it's strange, like, we must be living in the last days. This is a sign that they have some concept or some idea of the Bible, right? So when she said, all I want is for my children to be in the truth, I picked up on that. I said, amen. You know what? That's all that I want for myself too. And, you know, right away, this woman and, and my wife and I, we became bonded. Like, just because we shared a common desire, we shared a common theme, because I said to them, you know what? All I want, all I want for my children is I want them to be saved and I want them to be working for God. That's all that I want. And then she shared a Bible verse for me. She, she said, you know, in the Bible, in 1 John, it says, my children, I have no greater joy than you walk 
in the truth. And I said, that's a great verse. That's my new favorite verse. And now, this could have easily ended there. But my wife, she said, hey, do you mind? Could we keep in touch via Facebook? And, you know, look, let's be honest. If you met someone on the beach and, you know, you started talking, most people wouldn't be like, yeah, sure, I'm going to add you on Facebook. No, they'd be like, no, you know. But this woman was like, of course. And so we recently added a friend on Facebook. Her name is Kendall Unruh, okay? Now, why am I sharing this story with you? You know, <clears throat> we are all given a chance to meet people every day, right? Every day we meet people. You meet people at the supermarket. You meet people at work, at school. But those relationships won't profit the gospel or the building up of God's kingdom unless you have a desire to try to help people come to know Jesus more. Even if they know Jesus more, there are still things that every one of us can learn still too. Isn't that right? And the point is that when you talk with people, most people just, just talk about general interest. Oh, you know, how are the Dodgers doing? How's the weather today? You know, I heard that there was a, a shooting in Virginia Beach, right? These kinds of things anybody can talk about. But if you're a soul winner, if you have been born again and you have that missionary spirit implanted in you, then it's not enough that you just talk to these people about things of general interest. You ultimately want to reach a place where you can talk to them about matters of the heart. Does that make sense? And folks, I want to challenge you this week. Make, ask God, Lord, help me find somebody that I can share something of spiritual value to by following these principles that are outlined in the Bible and in the spirit of prophecy. Now, next week, I'm going to show you what Jesus did when he was witnessing to someone. The same pattern, but I want to show it to you from the Bible. But I, because of this experience that I had, I wanted to share it with you. And folks, as you go throughout this coming week, you know, it's easy for us to forget but even my wife and I, we keep, we keep saying to ourselves, okay, our neighbor's here. Let's see if we can engage him. You know, let, we have someone here. And so we're trying to help one another to be more active in soul winning. Can you say amen to that? If you have a spouse, you know, if you have a, a roommate or whatever, encourage one another to be active, to try to help build up God's kingdom in your little sphere, or your little corner of the world. That's my challenge for you this week. God bless you as we continue with our divine service. Thank you.